والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters so inshallah ta'ala we are all aware about the virtue and the blessings of the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the meaning that there are no days in which righteous actions are done that are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. When this was said to the companions, the companions radiallahu anhum said, Ya Rasulullah, wala al-jihad fi sabilillah. Even if a person goes out for jihad, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, even jihad, that the actions are done on this day are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the person going out striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except in a situation when a person goes out striving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of their property and nothing of that returns. So there is an agreement amongst all of the scholars that these 10 days, as Imam At-Tabari rahimahullah ta'ala commenting on the verse in Surah Al-Fajr, Wal-Fajr wa Layalin Ashar, that Allah Jalla wa'ala swears by the dawn and the 10 nights. And this is referring to the nights of Dhul Hijjah, that these days are the very best days in Sharat ta'ala for you and I to offer acts of ibadah. Now the acts of worship are so many, so what should we concentrate on? Inshallah ta'ala, let me mention maybe four or five different acts of ibadah for us to focus on so that we can maximize the reward inshallah ta'ala. First and foremost, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, making tahmeed, saying alhamdulillah, tahleel, la ilaha illallah, at-tasbih, subhanallah. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently throughout these days is extremely important. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the benefits of a dhikr, ala bi dhikrillah, tatma'innu al that only by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the heart will find tranquility. So this is the first act of ibadah, inshallah ta'ala, that we will all, bi idhnillah ta'ala, try to focus on, on these very blessed days, and that is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. The second one I want to mention, inshallah ta'ala, is to arrange a qurbani. And this comes under giving sadaqah. Now, sadaqah, whether it is giving money, uh, giving form of wealth to others, but more specifically to arrange a qurbani, to remain or to arrange a sacrifice for it to be given on behalf of your family is something which is a proven sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, during this time, if you are going to arrange, let's say, for example, a sheep uh, to be slaughtered for you, that the father or whoever is responsible for the family, he arranges that inshallah ta'ala and that is sufficient for his whole household, is as though every single person has to do that. So this is a very, very highly recommended sunnah to the extent that some of the scholars say it is an obligation for the person who has the means to arrange a qurbani for them to go ahead and do that. And this particular sunnah is for everybody in Sharat Ta'ala, for those who are not performing the hajj. So for us in Sharat Ta'ala, try to arrange this during the days of Dhul Hijjah. The third one I want to mention in Sharat Ta'ala is as siyam fasting. Now it is narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, some of the wives of the Messenger alayhi wasallam, informed that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would fast the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah. Obviously, the tenth being the day of Eid, we're not allowed to fast this day. So it's a great opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, for us to gain a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa taala during these days by fasting. So to recap the acts of ibadah that we mentioned, the first one is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly is to give a qurbani, to give charity. Thirdly is fasting. And for those who are able to do that, inshallah ta'ala, is to perform the hajj itself. Now we are living in a time where it is maybe difficult for us to travel abroad, but those who have that opportunity that they perform hajj. And that these are the only 10 days or this particular month, Dhul Hijjah, that you are able to establish the five pillars of al-Islam. That you testify, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and that is always there with you. You are establishing the fara'id of the salah. You can pay your zakah during this time. Many people focus on giving their zakah during the month of Ramadan. If a person is able to give their zakah during these blessed 10 days, then you can do so inshallah ta'ala. And this is, of course, zakah, and there is the ability to fast and to perform the hajj itself. So the acts of ibadah are not to these four. Of course, there are many acts of ibadah that you can engage in. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا 
fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can and remember worship your Lord until the inevitable comes to you the certainty comes to you and that is death may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us success fi darain in this life and the hereafter ameen wassalamu alaykum wa